Mr. Femi Aratokunwale, a security risk and crisis consultant, joins us now in the studio to give more suggestions in tackling security across the state. Thank you for coming on the program. Um, good afternoon so much. Thanks. Good, good afternoon. afternoon. Now, it seems like more and more small arms and ammunition are finding their way into the country. That's quite worrisome, isn't it? Well, we could, we could say that that is actually a worrisome, but let's look at it from this angle. For how long has this been going on? How long have we been talking about the small arms coming into the country. We have loose borders. I'm not saying the government is not doing enough, but their best is still not good enough to provide security for the country. That is the problem we're having today. And when we have all these small arms coming in, how do we actually curb it? Who is in control of it? How do we actually know, okay, this is a set of people doing all this of leaving the security in charge of it, or maybe we have some criminals doing all this for business reasons. That is why today we have loads of kidnappings going on around the country. Now, what do you suggest in curbing this? My suggestion is this. If we are short staff within the borders, we should try to have more border controls in terms of you know, employing more people to do this job. And for them to do it, they need more adequate training. And the training has got to be holistic so that we can actually target where we have the hotspots so that our hotspots can actually be covered and protected. That's what we need to do. Now, just like he said, you know, the security agencies and the government, they're trying, right? They are trying, yes. Um, but in what, in what areas, to be specific, would you say that uh, they are failed, so to speak? I'm not going to call my country a failed state, but however, we have some failed institutions, or perhaps we have some leaders that are actually not doing what they are meant to do. If they are not fit for purpose, it is better to step aside and allow the young, vibrant men and women that can do this job to get the job but done. But I'm talking about aspects of security yes. where they have failed. The aspect of security, they have failed. Training is there. They failed in terms of training. You tell me, an average police officer walking the street, how many times a year do they go for training? Do they have budget for it? If they have budget for it, what sort of training are they giving to them? If we know the kind of training we're giving to them, they won't have a rise or uprise in what member of public seems to be talking about that all security is completely hell loose in the country today. So that means training is the number one key thing that's actually failed in Nigerian security today. Now let's talk more about this training. I'm sure that you're abreast with stories in the news and different parts of the country. So when we talk training, what kind of training should they be getting right now to tackle you know, the burning issues on the table? The burning issues on the table right now we need to consider first these days. Do they actually have what we call the security customer service training to actually, you know, um, engage with the member of public? The answer is no. Their superior might have it, but what about the frontline service men and women? What kind, of, what kind of presentation do we actually see in them when they're actually talking to the member of public? They want to do more, but they don't know any other way around to go about it. So it is better for the government to just like, you know what, guys? We need people that can actually deliver this training program. Please come to our aid. Our diasporans, please, can you just please come back home and do something? Have a platform for them. Give them a strategic contract or probably a timeline of what you want them to do. It is not just about speaking loud about different budgets every day, billions and millions rolling around, and at the end of the day, nothing is being done. Let us look into the welfare of all these security men and women we're talking about. It's still part of it. Most of them might be frustrated. We don't even know their mental health issues or whatsoever. So it is a complete ball game that we need to now start separating and making this work well for us. Now, when we look at various regions of the country, to the, from the northeast, northwest, north central, yeah. um, these are hostile environments. It is more than hostile how, right now. How, how should the citizens protect themselves? You see, we, we, we do not need to say the citizens need to protect themselves. The government has got to be very open about what the situation is at the moment, that, okay, we have raised the boiling point. Now, what we do need now is this. Let us look into how can we strategize and make the security very good to protect lives and properties because the major issue is this if we can provide lives and properties if we can protect them then we are good to go but at the moment we are not doing that and that seems to be the real concern of member of public today again the member of public too should try as much as possible to support if we see a lot of things going wrong we then we need they need our support definitely and we need our support too we need to work hands in hand together to make sure that at least we put an end to this menace going on in the society today. Thank you very much, Mr. Femi Aratokunwale, a security so risk and crisis consultant.